Um, how many people are part of the Adizukan collective now? Our core group is four people. Uh, but outside of that, we have like members or like uh, people that are uh, active with the resources and the programming. Uh, and that network, I would, it keeps getting larger. Um, I'd say definitely over like 12 to 15 people. There are a couple people in our discussion section who were curious, Knox, about how um, uh, how you create alliances within and without your community. So how do you build? How are you, how do you build networks? And what's your um, What's your approach to collaboration? It's uh, definitely uh, service-based leadership. So, um, you know, there's it's also relationship building um, and experiences together. So a lot of the times it's showing up with shovels, you know, being ready to lend a hand uh, and listen, you know, our eyes, ears, uh, hands, and shovels, you know, ready to uh, just listen and, and enter. So that's how I enter a lot of spaces. Uh, specifically, like, I, I know I do some some uh, living and uh, exchanging in New York City and the Bay. So a lot of times I showed up in ways that's like uh, there to learn. And even though I had much experience and wisdom as well, it was just kind of like waiting my turn to share type vibe too. So it's like respecting what's already there and acknowledging and honoring, uh, you know, a community or an ecosystem. It's called ecosystems and they're expansive. Uh, so that's one way to like, I enter the ecosystem in that way is just, you know, seeing how I can be of service or help. Um, and then when it's my turn to share, I'll, I'll array some things and then uh, continue to build a, a relationships and grow from there. I noticed you use the word activating a lot, you know, that your sense of activism is also about activating other people and activating um, musical potential or artistic potential. And that it seems like collaboration is very much about activating other people. In, in your vision, is that right? Or is that how Adizukan kind of began as a multimedia um, collective? In terms of social justice, looking at those frameworks and looking at like the large framework that exists um, off like oppression and power. So it's like analyzing those things and getting to a point of like, you know, community education discussions and syntheses and analysis and surveys, reflection, artwork, all these things uh, when Arizokan was born, it was it was it was uh, it was looking to um, fill the the solution. So, if we're looking at colonialism, right, this very complex system of oppression, um, you know, we can break it down and say that at the end of the day, it's cultural and economic displacement. Uh, you know, it it violates different ways that people have value or moving value in ways that they're living. So, uh, that's been historic in in terms of uh, colonialism. So. Um, to look at it, that, that one sentence there, it's just like, okay, what can we do as community members, individuals, groups, orgs, institutions uh, to come together um, and uh, put placement, place making or, or, or economic and cultural uh, uh, placement, you know? How do people fit into community, right? So maybe it's not always transactional in a capital way of uh, economic placement. Maybe the value is just being able uh, to share wisdom or to show up and to contribute. Um, and those are different ways of like building and placement when we're thinking of those things. And then cultural spaces as well, right? There's tons of knowledge people hold and, and, and collect and have. So it's like being, uh, being an anchor to help provide a platform, provide space to have to change medicine, which is their knowledge and their, their histories and, and their work too. So um, that's, the, that's kind of like the daily active thing to do every day. <laughs> It's yeah. like, you know, how, how is uh, people, how is people all right today, you know? And that, that works on a, on a grassroots level to, um, you know, contractual level uh, to um, like uh, nonprofit levels. There's just different levels people are, are, are finding place or, you know, while we're, as we're all sitting in this complex system of oppression. So it's like kind of being aware of those things and then trying our best to, to work and move with the given circumstances we're dealing with. So. I have a a question about um, that I think a lot of st uh, students have in the class too about um, uh, coming to the place of Ann Arbor and that short video that you created, the Streets is Talking. And um, could you tell us a little bit more about when you made that video, why you chose that place in Ann Arbor, um, what what you were what you had in mind in creating this and then posting it. Mm -hmm. So this was in January. Um, and that was during uh, the awakening. 
the North season or you wait no and uh, that's yeah the winter the winter time so um, this collaborator uh, white feather woman uh, she's from the same nation uh, unseceded territory I'm a, I'm a part of which is called Wapo Island um, you know we met through the, the the internet which was cool because you know I, I travel and then I post kind of places where I'm at and updates um, and she mentioned like hey my family's back there and then you know it's like a thing where you know just being in location and proximity is like oh dang we're you know definitely related and uh we're we're catching up right because you know um in a lot of the ways you know the the structure separates us and families in all types of ways so this was like a good way to connect um and i i let her know that um i was supposed to go just play music there was an opening at stamps gallery um and i was just going to play the music for the evening and uh, they was asking, uh, how can we do a land acknowledgement? I was like, oh, okay, cool. Let's uh, let's look into that. Let's uh, um, let's continue to uh, challenge what that means uh, outside of just kind of a statement. You know, what kind of actions can that work with or inspire to do? So, um, talking with her, um, just letting her know, it's like, hey, if you're down to um, come to this gallery, we can we can uh, we can do a couple things there. One is like. Um, since like the Adazo kind of is telling stories, like that's, that's one way to document a story, right? You know, Knox comes in, drops some beats, um, highlight, you know, the, uh, the mission of the, the gallery and the, the space that was made uh, that was beautiful that night, and then kind of uh, document that. But we've been looking at ideas of uh, expanded, like expanded stories, like what's the expansion of that in the different well, realms or ideas that it sits in. And, um, and dealing with her, there's like a cooperation there, right? So she's working as an artist in Canada and doing um, different sets of cultural work like that, uh, traditional contemporary cultural work. So I was like, oh, cool, let's let's take some photos uh, to help, you know, to help kind of um, give a vibe or a presence of what you're doing um, and then just kind of snap that. And then it's like, okay, let's look at um, uh, the treaty area, what sits on that land area. So, you know, honoring that and putting that up there, the, the treaty land that is there. And uh, also like just dis like disrupting or not disrupting, but filling the the space, right? Like of um, like forgotten natives or this, uh, this, this erasure that happens. So like just being able to put uh, a matriarch, uh, jingle dress, dancer and a medicine dress on the land which is part story of picture, which is part story of cooperation, but which is also parts healing, right? Because there's a lot of oppression that happens on all types of land. So it's like, we're acknowledging that land, that treaty land that sits over there and dancing in the street. So it's like kind of saying like, you know, the land is being activated. We're speaking the language again to the land. We're dropping our medicines there and we're doing it in out of uh, creation and unity, you know? So it's like, um, those are some of the intentions of those ex, like, uh, extended stories that we did. And um, we were looking to put a, a series together. It's, it, it exists with a couple of things because then there's also a teaching about the dress in another video. Um, there's also raw footage of the documentation of that day. And then there's like a photo gallery of the pictures. Um, so yeah, so the, those elements into that like, expire that. And we love telling stories um, in very like uh, documented ways. Um, and, and with the music we make. So it was just kind of that to like continuing to push that music and that, that, that vibe in there. So. Yeah, thanks so much for this. This is, this is awesome. Um, uh, Alexander is wondering, as a rapper, how do you come up with lyrics that can deliver your intended message, flow naturally and rhyme? And I guess I would like to add to that, um, what is the significance of hip hop for you? Because it seems like in a lot of your projects, sort of hip hop has this really central place um so yeah that's the, that's one question okay i thought i heard like four questions <laughs> we'll start with the first one i think and it was like technique things right yeah uh yeah so um like how do you come up with lyrics that deliver your intended message flow naturally and rhyme that's that's like um there's all types of ways for that like sometimes it's just eating a salad and ha drinking ginger tea and getting my thoughts in a portion be like, okay, this one needs to be said. Sometimes there's moments where it's like, you raged out, uh, you got the righteous rage going on and you're trying to figure things out. So 
things get written down in a list. Um, I make a lot of lists. And uh, one thing I do is like, I imagine it how it looks as a visual, as a visual or a short film or something. And then I work backwards from that. Um, and then like the emotion is important, like transferring emotion. That's where the lyrics come from, the emotion. So it's like really honing in on that and understanding like that emotion, like it sounds when you're trying to sleep and the thunder cracks outside your window and you wake up and you're naked and you're nervous, your house is getting shot up. So it's like, what does that sound like? You know what I mean? So it's like, that's also a process to make lyrics. Um, and the second question was um, why hip hop, right? Right, right. Oh yeah, well, hip, that's the DNA of the hood. That's like hood music. <laughs> And I'm in the hood, so it's like it's kind of like the the indigenous sound of the streets and the in the inner city. So it's kind of like um, that was that was where I, I fit really well. And I grew up listening to Queen because my mother listened to a lot of stuff from the '80s, so I was listening to that stuff. But Queen stood out. Um, so I, I really like how Queen layered their sequences and portions. So that's really reflective in my hip hop music too. It's like. Hip hop music is very loopish and loopy. Uh, mine sits in uh, small sets of loops um, with continuation. So, yeah, that's the um, that's the main reason. But I mix. I like mixing the the, the tech the tech sound, the electronic sounds, and then like the indigenous drums and shakers and rattles and sounds, um, and like techno. Right, and techno was born in Detroit, so it's like got all this like vibe and sound of, of Detroit and hip hop in. Um, and yeah, just making that, that, that texture of the city and bringing my texture of like the indigeneity and Anishinaabe uh, vibe and architecting it that way, so. Thank you. Does one of the other section leaders want to ask, a, pass along a question? Raya? Yeah, um, this is more of a question that came up during section yesterday and I, I figured or a couple of questions that came up during section yesterday and I figured I would kind of make a hybrid question out of them. Um, thank you so much, Knox, first of all, uh, for, for everything. Uh, but the question I have is, um, we were talking a lot about rematriation in class yesterday. Um, and I think one of the questions that came up was one, what did it mean in the video that you did in Ann Arbor and how like, how do we understand that act as an act of rematriation? Um, and also like who, for me, that's also a question of audience, like what is what is happening, right? Who you're speaking to. Uh, so I think that's like one chunk of the question. And then the other part is um, students were also asking around, you know, what do we do? What do we do for us as students listening to this? What does rematriation or taking responsibility look like for us um, and one of the answers that came up was well we we got to talk to indigenous community about this we got to talk to the people whose land this is but I would love to hear more from you on on your thoughts on this and thank you again well, I might need your help uh, to, to the reference <laughs> um, <laughs> the first portion was like what's rematriation correct yeah what's rematriation and specifically when you did it in the in Ann Arbor or in the series in general, which I, I think you called All My Relations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's, so it's like a play, it's like a hip hop spin off a of repatriation, right? That's like a, a political act of returning things. Um, so with rematriation, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's that flip, that hip hop flip, right? So it's also like saying like, um, like, you know, pa patriarchy and that, that, that type of stuff is done too. Um, so with that play and that flip, it's also, there's also uh, deeper things with that. And it's like, retur like returning things, right? So what that means is like the earth, is the earth okay? And probably 100% of the time it, it isn't okay because of how we're uh, living collectively with it. So to, to, to rematriate is to help return that earth, that earth with itself, this mother earth, right? So it's like to look at in that that context, that, that dialectical context, right? Um, in, the, in that type of framework, it's dialectically said in terms of power and moving things, right? And then um, uh, I think what you're also speaking to is like why, uh, 
uh, was it why Ann Arbor? Why was it there? Is that what you're saying? Um, it was, yeah, it was a question of audience too. Oh, like okay. who, who right. you're speaking to when you're talking about rematriation. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times it's like when we look at that circle, right? When I mentioned earlier this idea of circles, like the core, the members, the cousins, the constituency, that's other terms to describe it, in, you know, organizing or leadership terms. It's just circles of community. So uh, generally, I know where those go. So it's like to update the friends and fam, and then new people that want to enter the circle, like, oh, wow, what's this Otazoka stuff? And then you're able to watch and to help develop and, and slowly get involved with it. So there's like also uh, elements of um, like uh, education, education, and also like uh, draw in, like, hey, there's this, there's this stuff that sits there and exists. Um, and Get, get more involved, get more deep into what is being said and, and woven. So uh, that's the audience like we're looking for is like, or, or that that does participate with that as new people come on. It's like, it's parts, uh, what's what's uh, uh, the good homie say? It's, it's parts entertainment justice and it's part like, uh, you know, education and things. So um, looking at that is like, how do, you, how do we help tell stories that are very, uh, Lots of information and things could be said, but one thing is just like that. Okay, um, rematriate the land. Like, okay, let's let's begin that. Let's so it's that combo. Let's talk there, and then like, okay, let's develop. Let's let's build. Let's um, seek guidance. Let's seek coalition. Seek uh, cooperation, and then like making actions from there. So it's like there's small things that can be built. So it's like as the artist. And where I sit in movement work, a lot of the times I help movement build. So that movement building works through the artwork. So like I, uh, I sit in meetings, I sit in organizing circles, and I listen to needs and the things that are being uh, concerned about. And then that's what it's also inspires the work too. So it's also part of uh, part we are. I think I mentioned this earlier. Potentially like we and me, like uh, it's part. It's uh, it's I'm the vessel, or I'm my 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 signature is with it. But what, what's being said is, um, it's like some we information. And, um, it's like we are like being responsible to the things I'm creating um, and like how, how people um, interact with it, you know, or how, how I help messaging for other things going on. And right now that's a um, huge concern is our earth, right? Um, outside like uh, different political campaigns, like the overall thing is like that is important. The, our water systems, the ways we live, like those are like incredibly about important right now. And I, I feel like more and more people uh, are recognizing that and then finding their own ways to contribute and to help. Um, and, and then to get involved, I think there was the next question of getting involved. Like, um, you know, if we're looking at uh, in terms of like original caretakers and original land stewards, you know, definitely check in with uh, like local local tribes and resources and institutions that exist out there, uh, try to ch check in with them and see what's going on. Because a lot of the time, like when those small orgs or those efforts are being pushed, there's like larger organizations that just kind of overshadow them, uh, you know, whether purposely or not, or an accident, you know, those things can happen. So it's like checking in first with like your local stewardship, your local land defenders, your local land workers. Um, and that's usually like a tribe or like a nation that sits around them. So, um, and then you can begin your thread, right? So if we're in the, U the University of Michigan, it's like, what's the next resource? It's like, oh, maybe the indigenous studies program or a department, um, check in with them, check in with those professors or, or staffs and, and boards and student groups and, and check in from there, you know, and see what's being, what's being uh, led or not led and help encourage and support them. Do some shovel work so it's that's on the basic tip you know like your your local level to do because then i know you see like we see that guy that's in the presidency making terrible decisions for everyone so it's like i uh, just start very local very local right on in your area and that's, that's probably the best thing i can say because it's the, your proximity the people you see all the time a lot of the times that's yourself right you look in the mirror every day, or maybe you don't, but you look at your arms and your hands and the things you're blessed and gifted with, and you make decisions, you know? So just starting being real, being real and understanding from there is a good question. Um, and um, yeah, and I think that one question is just like, uh, how do I take care of the land and who's taking care of the land? And 
you know, a question general would be like the indigenous folks. That, that's kind of connected to um, the song you made, um, Let's Meet Up by the Water, and that that was, um, you know, in response to the water crisis and trying to do a water ceremony. Um, could you talk a little bit more about how that song was created and what happened when you brought it to Flint? Um, yeah, so that, that was that was part of that uh, responsible solidarity. Like, you know, um, there's, um, I also want to let people know, like, if you're making music about um, stories and narratives of folks, it's like, make sure you're responsible to what you're saying or speaking to as well. Um, um, because that's just like, uh, who, who, I forget who says this, they're just like, it's, and this is a concept, we'll, we'll just skip this concept for now, but uh, being responsible in the art, right? So it's like the, that that ceremony's coming up. We, we've been working, we work with that that tribe and helping tell their stories in the filmmaking. And this was like a community, a grassroots effort, people power, everyone coming to contribute. And that was the way we're contributing uh, as we work with them and aware with them. So we help put it through song we help put some teaching into the song, right? Because maybe some folks are like, oh, water ceremony. If you know, you know, if you don't, you know. And then if you don't, you don't. So that was part of our effort, efforts as like entertainment justice and education to put that information out there and to do it in a way why how we always work, you know? Um, which is like the hip hop music, electronic music, um, you know, available studios, community members. So it's just like our practice being in, in, in practice and. Um, that was our efforts to get people's attention uh, and also teach and then get them activated, right? Um, you know, touch their touch their heart so that they can think about what they want to do and then they take their action. So that's also like a mold, uh, heart, head, and hands, triple H. So it's like the concept, how does art come into your heart? How does it move your head and your thinking? And then what kind of action will you take from there? So that was our, our, our mold for that. One, one question that one, a student asked in a section that I was in yesterday, um, do you see a connection between Streets is Talking and the, the um, Let's Meet Up by the Water? Are there any common elements in those two videos, even though they're very different occasions? Yeah, I think just uh, being not dead and extinct, that's like the whole uh, vibe, you know, like being able to be public because, you know, my people didn't have that privilege up until 1978 to do ceremony or to be in those things since 1978. So, you know, that was a good effort to erase a lot of things. So the fact that it can exist and be out is just like the resurgence of, you know, indigenous resurgence through culture and, and uh, you know, power and economics. And so that's, yeah, I feel like that's how they're related for sure is this indigenous resurgence of uh, being alive and well and not, you know, uh, Dead and in jail. Other questions? Section leaders? Um, if no one has anything, I do have another question. Go ahead. Um, my question is you, um, you talk about the local uh, knocks and focusing on the local, which I think is really important. But I think in some of the videos we've watched um, uh, with you over the week, you've also kind of tried to connect it on the global level. And I do feel like there are a lot of the issues you talk about are not really specific to the US anymore. And so I, I wonder if you could talk a little bit on how you, you think on the local global level, if you do at all. Yes, the, go the global pandemic of like oppression is imperialism from this country and we all benefit you know so it's like uh, connecting struggles across the world that uh this imperialist force is is caused as in an oppressive way you know so that's where the global um like a global element comes like this international solidarity of all people um, that don't want to deal with oppression no more you know because you know, we, we got our uh we got our struggles everywhere. And, and uh, I think the struggle of being hu human is like where a lot of things get fucked up. And and that's where that, that case and what you're speaking to is like a global level of 
responsibility. So um, it's like moving locally, doing our best. And then like, you know, I, part of that is like being a musician. So I get to travel a lot of places. So when I go and people book me and bring me out, I also uh, make intention and time to listen to the community where I'm at and just hear their stories and hear their struggles as well. And then if I have time to share, I'll say, you know, these are some of the things uh, I've overcame, but also the collective struggle that exists um, in different places in, in Turtle Island. And um, yeah, that, that's, I feel like that's part of that portion too, where it goes globally. Uh, as I touch different places, um, that that's like, you, you begin to see the, just the impacts everywhere of uh, terrible behavior, right? If we were going that mode, this terrible behavior, behavior of power and decisions that destroy humanity and build crimes against humanity. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just on that level because we, you know, we all live here, which is yeah. planet Earth. We all live on Earth. So it's like, that's, that, that's it's a, a global uh, uplift. As we're coming to the end of the hour, are there um, any projects you want to tell us about that you're going to be working on this year as part of your artist residency at UMS or with Adi Zukan? What are some things that are you're looking forward to doing? Uh, I'm looking forward to building. I'm really excited about this residency with UMS. So um, I'm excited to create. And uh, I talked with Maddie about this. It's just like the it's not you know the, the mode in which it operated is different right now so it's like with these given uh, borders or limitations like that breeds more creativity right so i'm just really excited for the creativity to be uh, built in these next couple of semesters and uh, with this program to build a project a very beautiful project that uh, revolves around let's call it earth science and math and which is moon the moon phases so really looking at studying the moon phases being connected with it differently and understanding that and the ways in which it affects the water in our bodies and our timing so that is going to be a good moment to uh, basically make some music with the moon so hmm. Well, we really look forward to um, seeing what you come up with this year and we'll be following your your activities, hoping to be activated. Um, thank you so much for sharing um, all this time with us and your beats in the background and the video and the, so many great thoughtful answers to really complicated questions, a lot of wisdom there. Um, and thank you again to Maddie for facilitating this hour class visit. I wish that you could be with us in person, but it's cool to see you in your studio too. So um, many, many thanks from us.